Hey, what's up? It's Steve, AKA The Sign Picker, and today I'm going to clean out this corner. Now, I've received comments and videos in the past of things that people have seen, some guys who have some real eagle eyes on street signs and traffic lights, and they've seen things back here and have asked me questions about them. Well, today I'm gonna to pull everything out because I've got another project in the works that involves this PVC pipe. And in order to get on that project, I have to clear everything out of here. So let's dig in. Okay, the first thing, it's not sign or signal related, but it is this fire emergency call box that has a telephone on the inside, right there, corded phone for fire emergencies. It's got the numbers 246 in here. I don't know what that means, maybe that's the number of this phone. Um, pretty neat, embossed letters here, here. These are reflective and on the back got a bracket where it was secured to a wall. Here it says Western Electric, um, pretty dirty. Uh, of course, not a sign, but something I want to keep as part of my collection. All right, the first light is this e uh, Econolite two-way cluster, uh, all steel, very heavy. It's got eight inch lenses. Um, can't tell, yeah, those are glass lenses. Uh, this thing really needs to be cleaned up. I need to take it out and, uh, and power wash it. Uh, it's got the uh, hanger on it. Interestingly enough, the hanger here is a Cross Heinz hanger, which is different than uh, the brand of the, the lights themselves, but sometimes you have to piece things out, piece them together. Uh, all the inside is, is original. Nothing's been restored here. Uh, it did have some mice living in it at some point, so even the inside's got to be cleaned out. Now, just a note, I really don't like to restore my signals unless they're really, really bad. So this probably will stay in its original condition uh, for as long as I own it. Here is a parking meter from Fort Wayne, which is the city that I live in now. Sounds like it might still have some money in there. I don't know how to get to it because I don't have the, uh, the keys to open it up, uh, but I bought this at an antique store. Uh, it's got the original dial here. Of course, everything is digital now. You can pay with credit cards at parking meters. Uh, this is the original coin operated uh, parking meter. Three hour parking, one hour, costs you five cents to park. Uh, and then it gives the times and says city of Fort Wayne. So not a sign, but uh, still a really neat urban relic uh, having to do with traffic and parking control. You can clean up. Next is a random base for a uh, square channel signpost. Uh, if you've seen some of my other videos or some of my photos on, on Instagram, uh, this was the base that the 10 foot pole sat into. I separated it apart just so I could fit it uh, in the garage, pointing over there, it's right over there. Uh, but this is the original base that came with it. So uh, it's a little wider here so the 10 foot square channel post can fit into it. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, probably nothing. I just tend to hoard stuff like this because you never know when you're going to need something like this. I can't just run to Walmart uh, and pick it up. So it's just tucked back in the corner. Here is a single uh, eight inch head from Traffic Signals Inc. Not the most popular or desirable of, of signal brand, uh, but I like it because it's got this embossed Traffic Signal logo that they have. It says Traffic Signals Inc. Uh, on the back out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, it's a yellow light. Uh, plastic lens, uh, really lightweight signal, super light. I wouldn't imagine that the uh, the, the uh, three light signal would, would weigh very much, but I love the green on it. Here in Indiana, we do not have green uh, traffic signals. Uh, we never really have, even during the time that this guy would have been posted. Um, I did throw a cord on there and had it lit up for a little bit. Um, I don't know, it was an eBay purchase many, many years ago. Original hangers, I do have uh, his brother uh, came home with me as well. Uh, so just kind of neat one. Here is the kind of light two-way cluster number two. This one hung at the same intersection as the one that I just previously showed. And these two were flanked on the ends and in the middle was a four-way cluster. And I think I actually have one head from the four-way 
uh, when they took those down. When they uh, decommissioned this intersection, they took those signals down and they cut the four-way up. They cut it right at the brackets. And so I have one that's got the, the, the round or the curve uh, elbow bracket, uh, elbow portion of the bracket still on it. That came from this intersection. Uh, but again, these are very heavy. Looks like uh, this is not a cross sign. I think this might be in a kind of light. Um, but again, original condition, a lot of uh, paint is flaking off. Everything is metal. Um, these are metal, the hoods are metal. Um, glass lenses, never been cleaned. Probably needs to be cleaned on the inside. I know some mice were living in these uh, when I had these stored uh, at my parents' house. But still really, really neat signals and really, really heavy. Here's a random 12 inch yellow amber signal head. Uh, this one's by Traffic Control Technologies. That's what the backs of those look like. This is a polycarbonate signal, uh, missing a hood. I think it's just a random uh, piece that I took off of uh, another signal when I made a three way into a two way, only because uh, I didn't have uh, enough hoods. So I don't know what I'm ever going to use this for, but it's back there just in case I ever need it. You never know. Here's a stacked intersection marker. Um, uh, used to be posted on Indiana State Road 332, uh, right outside of Muncie, Indiana, if you're headed toward Ball State, on the Galliard Road. These are really bad. Um, this one's not great in the sense that it's kind of small, especially for a state highway that's four lane, 55 miles an hour. Um, but they're, in terms of these three stack signs, they don't hold up really well in the wind. So out in the country where the wind is just whipping on it, uh, that's exactly what happened here. Just cut it right off the post, the wind uh, took it down. I noticed a couple here in Fort Wayne, where I live now, uh, the street department just recently uh, changed some of these up. They had a street marker with a one-way sign under it, and it was all stacked up. And uh, in no time, it's sitting up there like this. Eventually, that's gonna rip right off the post. Uh, that's what happened to this guy. I'm not sure who made these. I'm guessing the state highway department did a uh, really shoddy job on the letters. Everything's crooked. The road being up and down. This is something you see out of South Bend, Indiana. They do a lot of this uh, garbage. Uh, but these are adhesive letters that they just put on uh, green plates that they have on stock uh, at the street department. But this is my only three-way um, stacked sign. So. I'm gonna hang on to it. I had it for sale for a while, and even though it's kind of uh, produced a little poorly, uh, I still like it. I got this from a former coworker who back in the day grew up in a funeral home, one of the old, old houses, buildings that uh, the funeral directors used to live in in Hartford City, Indiana. Um, so this obviously would be uh, opened up and stuck out on the street when the, when the parlor was having a funeral prevent people from parking in front of it. It's made of wood, uh, pressed board, so it's starting to fall apart a little bit here, uh, but now it's in a more climate controlled environment here in the garage. Uh, made by Tri-State Signs out of New York, New York. I don't even know if they're still in business. Uh, has a little handle on top that keeps it all, uh, all together. Uh, pretty neat little sign. This is an Eagle pedestrian signal. That's really, really heavy. Got either knocked down or taken down, I don't know. But you can see it's all cattywampus. But I think there may have actually been another third signal head uh, on here. I think this may have actually come potentially from the campus of Ball State University at the famous scramble light that's right in the middle of campus. But I've looked through a lot of old photos to try to verify that. Unfortunately, I've not been able to verify it. But I remember my first years at Ball State, there was a signal that looked just like this. And that would explain, the, not this high degree of an angle, but that would explain why this one was at an angle like this, because you had a set of signals that were 90 degrees to each other, and then you had another set that was 45 degrees, because that allowed traffic to cross the intersection at a 45 degree angle. What a scramble light does is it shuts the whole intersection down from vehicular traffic, and allows pedestrians to cross in any direction. Uh, this is an Eagle uh, signal. It's got the Eagle logos on the back, and this thing just took took a fall. Uh, but it's still really neat, still heavy to me. I've almost wanted to try to swap parts out, cut this off, salvage one of the signals, move some of the hoods, but these, 
these screws and, and all the hardware are, are, are so tight and rusted in there, I do not have a lot, a lot of success. This one does have the original glass lenses that are worded. Uh, nowadays you see them all with iconography with the hands and the walking pedestrian signal. Uh, a lot of times those are combined with a, a countdown timer to tell you when the light's going to turn red. This has the orange dot walk and the uh, bluish colored uh, walk signals. Those are original, they're glass. Um, I won't ever get one of these again, I don't think. Uh, not, not in this configuration. So a lot of people would be quick to just uh, tear this thing apart, but I kind of want to keep it the way it is. Okay, last but not least is my 3M PV program visibility signal. Let's see if I get this thing out of here. Okay, I am pretty sure that this one fell off the pole. Uh, this is really the only 3M signal that I've had the opportunity to, uh, to get uh, and acquire in my collection. But the whole, if you're looking at it, the whole right hand side is sort of bent up. So either something hit it, like if a semi truck was turning, uh, this is a pole mount, so maybe a truck kind of hit it sideways, or it just fell. I'm inclined to think because of the weight of this thing that if it just fell all the way from where it was posted that it would have uh, a lot more damage than it has now. Um, so I'm thinking maybe something just uh, scraped it. But there is damage over to the, uh, over to the hoods, uh, and one of the heads has a little bit of damage uh, to it as well. But it's a, it's a massive signal, it's really bulky, uh, it's really heavy. Sometimes you have these 3M signals that have five lights on it. Uh, those would just be insane to try to carry. Let me stand it up here. There it is from the front. You can see it's been sitting here in the garage for uh, a long time. A lot, of, uh, a lot of cobwebs on it. But the lenses are still looking pretty good. Um, these are used to better control traffic from a distance. Um, and these, these lights are able to be uh, laser focused that you can only see them uh, from a certain distance uh, as you're coming up on them. Um, so they're used at various intersections that are you know, five-way intersections or something really complex that has a railroad track going through it, uh, something like that. But I've always loved uh, the looks of these signals, and I've always loved the way that they operate. Uh, 3M is such an innovative company, uh, whether it comes to signs or signals like this, they are, they are definitely one of the big players in, in helping with the continued evolution and innovation uh, in traffic control solutions. So, great company there. Let me try to open one of these up and try not to drop this whole thing. Uh, these are all misaligned here. Um, it's bent. Um, the, the, whole, the whole hood itself, even the, the base that the hood sits on, uh, is a little bent up. But here's what it looks like on the inside. Uh, again, I got some acorns in here, which tells me there were some mice hanging out in there. Um, there's a light that comes through this really awesome lens. So that's, that's pretty much a 3M signal. Um, I'd love to hang this up or do something with it, but because it's all bent up, I can't really, I can't really do a lot with it, um, other than just keep it in the collection. But now that it's out now, I'm gonna clean this corner. I'm gonna clean this signal off as well. Try to get it as, as shiny as I can. Okay, that's it. Now I'm gonna get in here with a broom, clean everything out. I'll even get in here with a microfiber cloth and try to wash uh, some of the baseboards down and some of the wall. Uh, in another video, you'll be able to see why I'm doing this, uh, and I'll post uh, the progress and the building of what my plans are. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you in the next video.